The universe. It's big. It's everywhere. It's all there is. And it follows a strict set of rules. Until it doesn't. Like, we see stars rotating around galaxies faster than we think they should, and we blame that on dark matter. We see galaxies flying away from each other faster than we think they should, and we blame that on dark energy. What is dark matter? What is dark energy? We don't know. But it keeps messing stuff up. But some of these inconsistencies might be explained by the shape of the universe itself. Because we really don't know the actual shape of the universe. We usually visualize the universe like this. Or like this. But what if it actually looked like this? I haven't had Pringles in a long time. Kind of forgot how it works. The point is, depending on where you're observing from, the universe could be one of three shapes. Flat, like a Triscuit. Round, like a cheese puff. Or saddle shaped, like a Pringle. There's probably only one of those that makes any sense to you intuitively, but I'll try to make the others make sense while whiffing down some processed snacks while I talk about the shape of the universe today on Answers with Joe. What is the shape of the universe? This was a question that was asked in one of my lightning round videos from a few months back. And in my lightning round videos, I take questions from Patreon supporters, and then I let the audience vote on which topics I should make a full video on. Well, this topic got a lot of votes, so today we're gonna talk about it. Because I, Joe Scott, am a man of my word. Integrity. So this question is challenging because we can't really know the answer. You know, like we can't just like take a picture of the universe. Um, I mean, JWST is awesome, but it's not that awesome. And the fact of the matter is we'll never be able to make a telescope that can see to the end of the universe because the universe is expanding and it's expanding everywhere all the time, which means the further away something is, the faster it's moving away from us to the point that the furthest galaxies are probably moving away from us proportionally anyway, faster than light meaning their light will never reach us and we'll never know they were there. Now, to add to that confusion, as we look out into the depths of the universe, the oldest galaxies that we see, the light from that has been traveling for, you know, billions upon billions of years. It's some of it from like right after the Big Bang, when the universe was smaller, and yet it's out in the depths all around us from a smaller universe. My head hurts. The point is, when we talk about the shape of the universe, what we're really talking about is the shape of space-time. And some of this gets pretty theoretical, and I'm certainly not the most educated person to talk about this, but um, I do have something that other creators don't have. Snacks. So imagine you're trying to get from one end of an empty room to another, and there are two possible paths. One is straight across, and the other curves around. Which path is the shortest distance from A to B? It's a straight line, obviously, which is kind of a universal fact. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You learn that in middle school. But that's not always the case. For example, if the room happened to have a mountain in the middle, the distance you'd have to travel in that third dimension might be longer than the curved path. So in this case, looping around would be shorter. So imagine that room is a universe, and I think you get an idea of what I'm talking about here. In a flat universe, straight lines are the shortest. In a curved universe, well, things get trickier. The study of the universe's overall shape is called cosmic topology. It's kind of like being a surveyor for the universe. Cosmic topologists deal with things like local geometry, relativistic curvature, and just the nature of the universe as a whole. You know, little stuff like that. The problem is it's kind of hard to study the structure of a thing when most of that thing is invisible. So you've heard all about dark energy and dark matter and all that, but did you realize that that takes up 93% of the universe? Yeah, all the matter in the universe, all the stars in the sky, all the galaxies and the deep field photos from Hubble and JWST, the billions upon billions of galaxies that we know about, are only 7% of the universe. Cool. Yeah, so it's estimated that dark matter takes up about 25% of the universe and dark energy takes up 68% of the universe. It takes a lot of dark matter to keep those galaxies together, and it takes a lot of dark energy to yeet those galaxies away from each other. So you got these two forces that make up the bulk of the universe. You can kind of think of dark energy as an expansion force and dark matter as a contraction force. And the shape of the universe depends on the balance of these two forces, the light and the dark side of the force, if you will. If the contraction force dark matter wins out, then you get a closed universe, a spherical universe. 
a cheese ball universe. If the expansion force, dark energy, wins out, then you get a, a saddle-shaped universe. A Pringle-shaped universe. This will make more sense later. But if the two forces balance themselves out, you get a flat universe. A Triscuit universe. By the way, if you're wondering why I didn't just pick a random, like, flat, square-shaped cracker, like a saltine or something, um, it's because I wanted a Triscuit. Shut up. It might help to imagine two perfectly parallel lines traveling perfectly straight beside each other across the vastness of the universe. If the universe was a sphere, those lines would eventually converge, like they would over the surface of a ball, a cheese ball. If the lines curved away from each other, that would mean expansion was winning out, which could be visualized by two lines cruising down the surface of a Pringle. And if they remain parallel for infinity, then no forces are winning out, and the universe is flat. As flat as a Triscuit. Spoiler alert. The universe is a Triscuit. Though there are some interesting implications for what would happen in a cheese ball or a, a Pringle universe. Come on! <sighs> Sorry. In a Pringle universe where the straight lines fly away from each other, over a long enough distance, navigation would be next to impossible. So, again, that's, that's over a long enough distance. So, like, astronauts would need to be able to know what direction the straight line that they're traveling in would eventually take, while also having to calculate the direction that stars that they're traveling to would actually be traveling, instead of curving the way that they think it's going to. It would curve in a different direction. It would, it would be a mess. Obviously, that's not a problem we would have to deal with for thousands of years, but still. The cheese puffs too? Anyway, in a closed cheese ball universe, things get a bit more interesting. Because if our proverbial astronauts flew straight for far enough, they could end up right back where they started. Astrophysicist and author Jean-Pierre Luminet used a soccer ball to explain how this would work, which is basically the same idea as my cheese ball metaphor. Maybe a little less edible. Unless you're my dog. Luminae also compared the universe to a video game. So you know how when you go past the edge of the map in Pac-Man, you kind of just pop up on the other side? Well, according to Luminae, the universe is like that, only in 3D. There's no edge in Luminae's universe, it just loops around, which would create some really interesting optical illusions, like, like the stars that we see out in the distance would actually be behind us. And because of that looping, the universe would actually be way smaller than it appears, because you're seeing things that are just looping around in space. So yeah, instead of being 93 billion light years across, it would actually be a little bit smaller than that, something like your mom. So even though the actual physical dimensions of the universe are finite, because of this looping effect, you could travel in a straight line forever. And if that hasn't broken your brain completely, Luminae describes this soccer ball universe as having 12 sides, so it's technically a Poincaré dodecahedral space. I'll stick with cheese ball. Now there was some evidence for a closed soccer ball universe that was found in data from NASA's WMAP satellite. Uh, it made some headlines a few years back, but uh, there has been new data that seems to contradict it. Anyway, the idea hasn't been completely ruled out, but it's heavily debated. But really the vast majority of observations and studies point to the universe being flat. One way that we know this is through the cosmic microwave background radiation. So when we're talking about the parallel lines across the universe thing, we're talking about over unfathomable distances. And no light has traveled further across the universe than that first light from the Big Bang, which was stretched over space and time over billions of years into the microwave spectrum and cooled down to just about 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. And it's everywhere. And observations from the Planck telescope have studied the tiny variations in the temperature of the CMB from various regions. And it turns out, that those temperature differences actually do coincide with large-scale structures in the universe today. Like areas that were just a fraction of a degree warmer at the beginning of the universe produced galaxy clusters. Cooler spots created voids. And we can see all this today. If the universe was curved in one way or another, we'd see a lot more distortions in those observations. But we don't. So... Flat universe. As always, we have to add the disclaimer that there is still a tiny degree of uncertainty to our measurements and future instruments might find something different. But for now, we believe the universe is flat. Enter the Triscuit verse. The frustrating thing about it, though, is that the flat universe doesn't answer the biggest question of all, which is, how will the universe end? Because in an expansive Pringles universe, we know that the universe will continue to expand forever, maybe even accelerate to the point that it all tears in half the big rip scenario. 
in a closed cheeseball universe, gravity and dark matter would win out. It would slow the expansion over time to eventually stop, pull everything back together again. That's the big crunch. But in a flat universe? We're not entirely sure. Now, either of those options could win out if there's enough of an asymmetry in the forces, but in fact, we still don't know for sure what is the limit to the universe or if it just keeps going infinitely. Like if we could somehow reach that cosmic horizon where we can't see the light from the galaxies anymore, would we just see more galaxies? Triscuits may be delicious, but they create a lot of cosmological headaches. Also, there's nothing saying that the topology of the universe couldn't change. It's definitely changed before. The universal expansion that we think of as the Big Bang in the early universe is kind of the perfect example of an expansive Pringles universe, which eventually settled into a Triscuit universe. To me, this kind of feels like another example of how fine-tuned our universe is. Like, I've talked before about how universal constants like gravity, the strong and weak nuclear forces and whatnot, like, if they were just a fraction of a percent different, we wouldn't have the universe that we have today. Maybe the whole dark matter, dark energy ratio could be added to that list. Which, if the universe is all there is, it is kind of remarkable that it worked out like that, but maybe that's just survivor bias. Like, we see that the universe is this way, and that it led to us, and that makes us feel special. But in a multiverse scenario, there might be all kinds of different universes with different constants that create vastly different scenarios, 99% of which probably just blink out of existence immediately after forming. Who's to say that there aren't universes trying to form inside of our universe all the time, just kind of bubbling up in the quantum foam, but none of them have the right constants, so they just evaporate. A rice cake universe, if you will. Anyway, long story short, we most likely live in a flat Triscuit universe, but the Pringle and cheese ball theories just keep popping up. Now, at this point, you might be saying, Joe, are you stepping outside of your lane a little bit here? To which I would respond, you think? If you want to take a deeper dive into these topics by people who actually know what they're talking about, I'd recommend Dr. Becky or Fraser Kane. These are two friends of the channel with much more credibility on this. The thing is, though, anytime you're talking about the universe or cosmology, you're dealing with distances and sizes that are just incomprehensible to the jello molds in our heads. Like, it's kind of like when we looked into the atoms and we found this subatomic quantum world where things just don't work the way they do in our world. There were some new rules we needed to discover. Maybe there's an opposite side of that, where we look at things on infinite scales. Maybe entirely new types of physics come to play there, too. That's just speculation on my part, but the concept of infinity is bonkers. You get a whole bunch of paradoxes and nonsensical scenarios, but if you want to try to make sense of infinity, uh, there's a whole course of it over on Brilliant. Infinity is kind of advanced, though. Um, I mean, it's infinity, so I might suggest you start with a scientific thinking course and work your way up from there. This course features 21 lessons that starts with the basic rules of science and how those rules apply in your daily life. Things like gears and pulleys, heat flow, water pressure, how light works. And then what it does is it sets up a basic foundational understanding that you can then build off of. And it does it in that brilliant way by kind of gamifying learning with interactive lessons, problem solving puzzles, and much more. That's kind of Brilliant's thing. They hijack your natural hardwired problem solving abilities and then uses that to walk you through the subject. By learning through problem solving, you're not just memorizing numbers and names, you're learning in a way that makes sense to you so that you can then apply that understanding to go deeper into the subject or to anything else in your life for that matter. That way you remember it better and you can build on it so that the next thing you know you're mastering concepts that you've never been able to grasp before. Things like infinity or quantum mechanics or LLMs. Yeah, Brilliant's great for people like me who maybe never quite connected with the material in school because it wasn't taught in a way that made sense to me. You have courses in computer science, physics, chemistry, general relativity, and even competition level math. Seriously, all the subjects that made your eyes glaze over in school, this will make it make sense to you. It's awesome. Plus, they have an app on your phone so you can take the learning with you wherever you go. So like, you know, maybe next time you're staring at your phone trying to avoid having a conversation with someone, you could be learning advanced calculus. Why not? Brilliant is great. If you want to give it a try, you can get 30 days of the premium subscription for free if you go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, and then you can sign up for the annual plan. You'll get 20% off. And you can get through these lessons fairly quickly, so you can try a lot of things in 30 days. Seriously, that, that's my challenge. Go look at their lessons and find something that you struggle with in school and just try it for 30 days. I bet you'll have a moment where it suddenly just clicks for the first time, which is an amazing feeling. I want you guys to have that. So go learn about infinity or anything else for that matter for 30 days for free. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Go check it out. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, if this is your first time here and you like the concept of uh, cosmological stuff, then maybe check out this video where I talk about how uh, some scientists consider that maybe the entire universe is a brain, because that could be a thing. 
or you can check out any of the videos in the sidebar that the algorithm might be suggesting. Uh, and if you enjoy it, I invite you to subscribe. I'm here every Monday. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters and my channel members. If you would like to directly support the channel and kind of keep the lights on around here, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe or just hit the join button below this video. And I guess that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye opening rest of the week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care. People were asking me to do a turn at the end. So there you go.